Right now, Madison fire officials say cigarettes are the common thread in recent fires that displaced dozens of residents. And the Trump administration threatens to veto a $3 trillion relief package the House is expected to pass today. This is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Friday. Officials with the Madison Fire Department say recent fires with the common link of cigarettes have left more than 80 people in the community without a home. Since February, the department responded to at least six fires suspected or determined to be caused by improperly discarded smoking materials. That includes a west side apartment complex on Muirfield Road. Cigarette butts ignited inside a clay flower pot and strong, winds, uh, strong wind gusts spread the fire quickly displacing more than 70 residents in total the six recent fires started by cigarettes caused nearly three million dollars in property loss madison fire is urging people to make sure cigarette butts are all the way out and to empty receptacles regularly firefighters are reminding people to use approved ashtrays metal coffee canisters or a bucket with sand they also recommend getting renters insurance of the 80 renters displaced from recent fires only six had insurance to help them pay for temporary housing accommodations and replace damaged possessions. Let's head over to the Weather Center now. Meteorologist Chris Reese, a look at your first warm forecast. Foggy start to the day, but beautiful now. Yeah, absolutely. That fog has lifted. High pressure is in control right now. That means plenty of sunshine for us. So here's a live look outside right now. Get outside if you have the opportunity to do so today and enjoy that. High resolution Doppler is completely quiet for us. The showers, uh, those have moved on away from us. And if we look back towards the west, well, there's nothing there, so that means we're going to continue to stay dry as we move into the afternoon. There might be a few decorator clouds that start to stream in, but the main bulk of the cloud cover that continues to move away, Mark, which means not only are we in store for a beautiful afternoon, but perhaps a beautiful start to the weekend before those next thunderstorm chances move in. We're timing those out coming up right around 1220. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Chris. New at noon, Dane County is experiencing a significant increase in the number of medical emergencies related to alcohol overconsumption and substance abuse in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to new data from the emergency management officials, between February 1st and May 10th, there was a 38% increase in ambulance calls for substance abuse emergencies. There's a total of 666 EMS calls for alcohol or substance abuse in that time frame, up from 483 during the same time span a year ago. If you are struggling, help is available. Dane County funds a recovery coach program through Safe Communities. You can reach out to them 24-7. That number is 608-228-1278. Dane County health officials are announcing three new deaths related to coronavirus. There are now 517 confirmed cases in the county, an increase of 18 since yesterday morning. Public Health Madison Dane County says the jump in cases is due to a cluster at a long-term care facility. Across Wisconsin, there are more than 11,000 confirmed cases and 437 deaths. The Dane County Sheriff's Office says 37 inmates have now tested positive for COVID-19. That's up from 29 confirmed cases one week ago. Six of the inmates were released from custody, six recovered, and 25 of them are still in medical isolation. Contact tracing found one inmate had intentionally concealed symptoms to avoid detect, detect, detection, that is. This caused 32 inmates to test positive. Officials say the majority of people who tested positive are asymptomatic or only show minor symptoms. Across the U.S., there are now more than 1.4 million confirmed cases and more than 85,000 deaths. Still, states are continuing to ease restrictions. Florida restaurants, retailers, and salons in the hard-hit Broward and Miami-Dade counties will be able to reopen Monday with strict guidelines. In New Jersey, which has more than 140,000 infections, beaches will reopen in time for the Memorial Day weekend. It's all about what the consumer feels is safe for them. I'm okay with the implementing of opening beaches. I just want it done in a safe manner. New York State, which has 20% of all U.S. cases, has extended its stay-at-home order until June 13th. The White House is naming the leaders of an effort to accelerate vaccine research to end the COVID-19 pandemic. This comes as Congress is debating a multi-trillion dollar relief package. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. President Trump is naming a former pharmaceutical executive and a four-star general to lead Operation Warp Speed, the White House initiative to accelerate development of a coronavirus vaccine. It's a scientific, logistical, and military endeavor all at once, and the president will 
um, reveal to the country the two people who will be helping to lead the effort. The Centers for Disease Control has now released one-page reopening guidelines for schools, restaurants, and mass transit. It's a less detailed version of the original 63-page report, which the White House described as too prescriptive. Detailed protocols are needed to ensure the safety of whether it be children or adults in the workplace or children at camp or schools. The FDA is warning of possible accuracy concerns with a rapid test from Abbott Labs after an NYU study found it could miss up to 48% of infections. There are some data to suggest that there may be inaccuracies, false negatives with the Abbott test. However, there are many users who have contacted us and have not had this problem. So FDA is digging into it. The Trump administration is already threatening to veto a $3 trillion relief package the Democratic-led House is expected to pass today. We just spent $3 trillion. A lot of that money is not even in the economy. We're taking the next few weeks to carefully continue to execute getting the money in the economy, and then we'll, we'll see. House Democrats say state and local governments and millions of Americans can't afford to wait. Today we see lines for food banks across the country that go for miles and miles. Parking lots are so full at some of these places that they look like some kind of gathering for a major sporting event. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the bill will not pass the Senate, but he agrees another stimulus package is likely needed. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. And Leader McConnell says he's not sure when the Senate will be ready to move forward with another relief package. He says he'd first like to see how the recently passed money is impacting the economy. The State Department of Workforce Development is expanding its call center hours. Those will now be from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., an addition of two hours per day. They've also contracted outside vendors to assist with processing unemployment benefit calls, and they're recruiting employees to fill more than 315 positions. The department is tacking and taking on an enormous workload during the pandemic. From March 15th to May 9th, DWD received more than 518,000 unemployment applications and more than 1.8 million million weekly claims. More than 36 million Americans have filed for unemployment since the economic crisis began. Experts say job losses are hitting women particularly hard, especially women of color. The pandemic cost 15.5% of women their jobs in April compared with 13% of men. Experts say that's because many women work in areas hit hard by the crisis, leisure and hospitality, education and health services and retail. The impact is greatest for women of color. A National Women's Law Center analysis finds roughly one in in six black women and one in five Latino women are now unemployed. And there's more to come on News Now at Noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. I can't wait to share what I recently found buried in a box in the back of my closet. You better stick around if you want to see what it is. Take a break from cooking at home and order takeout from your local Monk's Bar and Grill. Monk's is offering curbside pickup takeout service for your safety and convenience during these difficult times. Visit monksbarandgrill.com for takeout menus and online ordering. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Annette and I'm an actress. Under eye bags and wrinkles are so frustrating. They're so hard to hide and so hard to get rid of. I came across Plexiderm and I was so excited. We have a model, his name is Richie, and all he's doing is taking a small amount. It's so powerful, that's all it takes. And what I love about Plexiderm is this is something that you can do in the convenience of your own home. It literally creates an invisible layer that tightens the skin and smooths it out. All you do is gently rub it underneath your eyes, on your fine lines and wrinkles, and it visibly disappears in as little as 10 minutes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. Looks even better. I can't even believe that this worked. I was a little skeptical, I am not going to lie, because I saw people online with it, and I'm like, yeah, right, that can't pop possibly work. I'm telling you, it really works. I thought I might see a little difference, but to see that big of a difference, and you know, I felt something happening, but I had no idea. Like, I have so many dark circles, I have the puffiness, I have the lines. Like, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> 
I did this to my father at home because I was skeptical. Yes, I admit it. Four minutes, 34 seconds. The appearance of his under eye bag was completely gone. We were screaming, you have an event. You have any of those moments where you want to feel the best about yourself. I am telling you, the videos that you see on social media and TV are real. Take action with the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge. This Mother's Day, get up to 50% off the normal retail price. Plus get free shipping. Visit Plexiderm.com or call the number on your screen. Take a break from cooking at home and order takeout from your local Monk's Bar and Grill. Monk's is offering curbside pickup takeout service for your safety and convenience during these difficult times. Visit monksbarandgrill.com for takeout menus and online ordering. Apple tort. Wow. <laughs> you know, we love flipping through community cookbooks where women from a church, sisterhood, or social club collect their best recipes. These cookbooks are usually sold as a way to raise funds for their organization. And when it comes to recipes, they're typically ones that each contributor takes great pride in, since their name is often printed right on the same page as the recipe. You can bet this gets a bit competitive, but in a fun way. Today, I'm sharing a recipe for a southern chicken salad bake that's a twist on one that I came across in a community cookbook that I found buried in the back of my closet. It's so good, it's certainly worth sharing. It's simply a can of cream of chicken soup, some mayo, chopped celery and onion, pimentos, and cut up chicken. You know, we mix it all together, then spoon it into a casserole dish. And just before it goes into the oven, we top it with cheddar cheese and coarsely crushed potato chips. When it comes out, it's ready to serve for dinner, family style, or we can take it to a neighbor because that's what they do in the South. Either way, you're in for a treat. To get the recipe for our chicken salad bake, all you have to do is visit our website. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a favorite southern way mm -hmm. for you to say "Ooh, it's so good mm. all right howard next to noon a beautiful day today with sunshine and highs in the 70s but a few shower chances this weekend chris has your first worn forecast coming up John Garden Centers are open to help you start the growing season. For a limited time, get a free bag of raised bed mix with the purchase of two. Shop now at all five John Garden Center locations. Get your growing season off to a safe and healthy start with John Garden Center. The way you get through hard times is to hold strong to your values. At Group Health Cooperative, our common values have sustained us for over four decades. Now is no different. We are here in our clinics but we want you to be safer at home. That's why GHC has more ways for you to get care anywhere, anytime, day or night. Be seen, be safe, be home. We will get through this together and we will all get better together. Since 1930, Grand Appliance and TV has been committed to providing our local communities with the products that have become essential to the way we live. Through thick and thin, we've remained steadfast in that commitment. We're open and making no contact curbside delivery as well as full in-home installations. Shop in-store or on grandappliance.com and get an extra 5% off most appliance purchases. We are Grand Appliance and TV. You know us and you can count on us. For almost 50 years, we've built trust within our communities by making customer delight our top priority. That trust allows us to improve lives one home at a time. During this challenging time, we want to make sure your needs are being met without stress by offering two-for-one windows with no interest and no payments for one year. So go ahead, visit us online, or call now from the comfort of home. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for felt Co. John Garden Centers are open to help you start the growing season. For a limited time, get a free bag of raised bed mix with the purchase of two. Shop now at all five John Garden Center locations. Get your growing season off to a safe and healthy start with John Garden Center. Oh, 
If you're hoping to check out the Duck Pond's new theater, we'll tell you how to get your tickets Saturday. And the sun is in the forecast for the first half of the weekend before showers return. Chris Reese is timing things out at 5 and 8. It's the first ever Coaches vs. Cancer Wisconsin Virtual Gala, Wednesday, May 20th at 7 p.m. An auction and inspiring program, all from the comfort and safety of home. Register now at Coaches vs. Cancer, Wisconsin.org. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Well, retail sales are plummeting except for online shopping, and Carnival Cruise is preparing to cut jobs. Diane King Hall has your Money Watch report. After another bad batch of economic data, stocks sold off in early trade. Renewed trade tensions between the U.S. and China also cast a shadow across stocks. Retail sales plunged a record 16.4% in April. That's according to the Commerce Department. Sales tumbled in every category except online shopping. Clothing sales sank 79%. Electronics fell 60%. And gas sales dropped 29% as consumers sat on the couch. Even even grocery stores saw a decline after people stockpiled in March. The hatchet is coming to Carnival Cruises' workforce. The company says it plans to slash 820 positions from its workforce of 3,000 employees. It also plans to furlough another 537 workers. The furlough will last as much as six months depending on cruise resumption and demand. The job cuts, however, are permanent. Today is National Slider Day, and White Castle is going all in on the day for mini burgers. The fast food chain is giving away free sliders to drive through customers with a digital coupon. You can retrieve the coupon from its website. The deal runs all day today, and tonight, White Castle is throwing a virtual dance party to celebrate and raise money for restaurant workers. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. I'm Diane King Hall. Thank you, Diane. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrial is down almost 50 points. The NASDAQ up 26. The S&P 500 down about a point or so. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yankee out of the radio barn today. So here are your farm numbers. For the weather here is Chris with your sunny forecast. That's right, Mark. Plenty of sunshine as we go through the rest of this afternoon and at least into the start of your weekend. But what was responsible for a lot of those showers and thunderstorms as we moved into last night, and that continues to push on towards the south and east. It's very slow moving as it does so. This is why this shows up on the map as a stationary front. But folks, high pressure is moving in from the north and west. So that's keeping the sunshine around today and those winds out of the north. But nonetheless, with the sunshine, we're still going to see those temperatures warming up as we move into the afternoon. Here's more and more of those showers and thunderstorms moving away from us. I do want to highlight what's happening over the northern Rockies right now. Parts of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. This is the next system that's going to begin to impact our weather by the time we move towards Saturday night and into Sunday. I'll be showing you more of that in a moment. In the meantime, enjoy what we have out there right now. Plenty of quiet weather over Wisconsin, and that's going to be the theme as we go really through the rest of today. Those next chance for thunderstorms come into the picture again Saturday, particularly later Saturday night into your Sunday and then we're going to see more showers and thunderstorms especially for the southern tier of the state moving into your Sunday as well. Let's time out 
when those could arrive. They're not arriving today, but we will see those temperatures topping out into the low 70s and then we'll cool down into the mid 40s as we head into those overnight hours. Those winds overnight start to become a little bit more nor eat northeasterly, so we'll start to see them off of Lake Michigan there. But then into tomorrow, that northeasterly wind keeps us just a couple degrees cooler, but we're still going to be warm as temperatures work their way into the upper 60s. Focus on what's starting to move in from the south now by the time we get you into the afternoon. By 4 o'clock, we'll see those highs right around 69 to 70, but more clouds begin to join the mix into tomorrow afternoon. And then eventually we start to see those showers moving in too, especially as we move into the overnight hours into the early morning hours on Sunday. So this is 3.30 in the morning. Watch how these showers really begin to work their way in from the south. We will stay unsettled as we go through your Sunday as a whole. So this is now 10.30 in the morning on Sunday. We still see more showers and thunderstorms, and then eventually more of them begin to move in from the west. That's a cold front. That's going to keep temperatures cooler as we move into your Sunday. In fact, we will only warm up towards about 61 degrees, but then watch how our temperatures still trend above average as we go through time and we're still looking at 80s by the time we get you towards the end of that forecast though temperatures have trended just a little bit cooler as we've gone through time but folks still as we go through the next six to ten days and even the next eight to 14 days we are looking at above normal temperatures across much of the eastern two-thirds of the country but especially the upper midwest that's where the greatest probability is for above normal temperatures as we go through time and a lot of that is coupled with sunshine. So even though we're forecasting rain this weekend, we have a nice stretch of weather, folks, where you will have the opportunity to get outside, enjoy some warm temperatures, and really just soak up the sun. Of course, we mentioned this yesterday, but those rain chances arrive just in time for Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. but that seems to be the theme every <laughs> single year. But at least for one day of the yeah. weekend. <laughs> so on the bright side, none of those look like washouts right now. The models are coming in on a timing of more so Saturday into Sunday with perhaps a dry Memorial Day, which would be good news. Okay, it's a ways off. It is. All right, Chris, thank you. Next at noon, from personal ceremonies to car parades, the class of 2020 is finding creative ways to celebrate their graduations. We'll take a look at their ideas next. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. I'm not used to taking care of things on my own. My wife, my sweetheart, took care of me for 46 years, and I've loved every moment. When the doctor gave her six months, all she wanted was to spend it at home with me. Now it's my turn to take care of her. I know a grace will help me care for the one I've loved my whole life. A grace, hospice, and palliative care. Just call. A grace will help. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Annette and I'm an actress. Under eye bags and wrinkles are so frustrating. They're so hard to hide and so hard to get rid of. I came across Plexiderm and I was so excited. We have a model, his name is Richie, and all he's doing is taking a small amount. It's so powerful, that's all it takes. And what I love about Plexiderm is this is something that you can do in the convenience of your own home. It literally creates an invisible layer that tightens the skin and smooths it out. All you do is gently rub it underneath your eyes, on your fine lines and wrinkles, and it visibly disappears in as little as 10 minutes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. It looks even better. I can't even believe that this worked. I was a little skeptical, I am not going to lie, because I saw people online with it, and I'm like, yeah, right, that can't pop possibly work. I'm telling you, it really works. I thought I might see a little difference, but to see that big of a difference, and you know, I felt something happening, but I had no idea. Like, I have so many dark circles, I have the puffiness, I have the lines. Like, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> 
I did this to my father at home because I was skeptical. Yes, I admit it. Four minutes, 34 seconds. The appearance of his under eye bag was completely gone. We were screaming. You have an event. You have any of those moments where you want to feel the best about yourself. I am telling you, the videos that you see on social media and TV are real. Take action with the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge. This Mother's Day, get up to 50% off the normal retail price. Plus get free shipping. Visit Plexiderm.com or call the number on your screen. Graduation ceremonies for the class of 2020 have been canceled nationwide, but many schools are finding ways to give high school seniors a special moment. Michael George takes us to some non-traditional graduations. Graduating high school is a moment you never forget, but in the age of the coronavirus, it's a moment the class of 2020 won't get to experience. I'm not getting to do any of the normal things that high schoolers would get to do. High school senior Alexis Jones had her prom canceled, and now she and graduates across the country will also have to settle for a virtual graduation that they watch from home. 18-year-old William Bell was looking forward to having his family watch him walk. It is kind of disappointing just to know that five years or 10 years down the road, when we look back at our high school career, um, we won't have any pictures from graduation or any memories from prom. But schools and parents are coming up with creative ways to celebrate. At Redwood Christian High School in California, each student is getting a personal 10-minute graduation. Their family even gets to hand them a disinfected diploma. This is for our kids. This is our graduates, our seniors. Uh, they have been through so much. Senior year is supposed to be the best time of high school. At University City High School in Missouri, more than 100 parents held a parade for their graduating kids, honking horns and holding up signs. These graduations are anything but traditional, but seniors say they're happy to celebrate in any way they can. It's just like a small sacrifice that we had to make um, for the safety of you know, millions of Americans. We're really excited about our future, and we're not letting it dampen what we're looking forward to. In the end, the class of 2020 may come to be defined by how they handled this unprecedented moment in history. Michael George, CBS News. And on Saturday night, former President Barack Obama and a number of celebrities are holding a national commencement for the class of 2020. You can watch it live right here on News 3 Now. That's Saturday at 7 o'clock. And here's Chris with one final check of the forecast. Hey, plenty of sunshine out there as we go through the rest of today, Mark. Temperatures are going to be topping out into the low 70s. I encourage you to get outside and enjoy that. We'll see sunshine early on on Saturday. Clouds begin to increase in the afternoon, and then those showers arrive overnight Saturday into Sunday. Sunday Monday itself likely to be a stormy and cooler day as well. But Monday through Friday next week look fantastic. We'll see you back here at 4. Now, a WISC TV editorial with editorial director Neil Heinen. The road to recovery is going to have a lot of barriers. The most serious and worrisome are the uncertain public health setbacks, but the list also includes frailties of human behavior, destructive politics, and Supreme Court decisions. Let's not get too hung up on the latest court ruling. The majority of the Wisconsin Supreme Court proved itself demoralizing and untrustworthy long ago. What we share now is the challenge of minimizing the damage inflicted by the court and other political ideologues. We find hope in polls showing overwhelming support for continued public health and safety measures, the leadership of many local government officials, and the steady hand of a governor focused on keeping all citizens safe. We do ask Speaker Voss and Senator Fitzgerald to show the decency of working with the governor on a plan to help Wisconsin reopen smartly and safely. We are desperate for thoughtful, caring, selfless leadership right now. Please step up.